Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Today, I thought we could just talk about some of the new fragrances that are about to come out. I don't think any of these or most of them have not actually launched, but I thought we could have a spot in a space where we could talk about them, talk about our opinions on what we think they might be or if we're interested in them or not. I do this for beauty over on my makeup channel. And since there are so many new perfumes launching, I feel like all the time, I think the releases have kind of picked up. I thought it'd be fun to have a space where we could talk about them here on the channel. And I always get so excited when I see new perfumes launching, but I definitely don't necessarily want to buy them all. I always wanna get my nose on stuff, but I think it's fun to be able to talk about just what's happening kind of in the fragrance world. So that's what we're gonna do. I hope you guys will like the video. Let me know if you wanna see more of these in the future. I am going to be looking off of Fragrance Watch on Instagram if you kinda of wanna keep updated. I feel like Fragrance Watch is very similar to Trend Mood and they do fragrance as well a little bit now, but um, this is all fragrance. So I will leave that Instagram down below, but let's just get into it. One of these is so exciting. First off, let's talk about the new Britney Spears perfume that's launching. This one is called Jungle Fantasy. So it's a flanker of the fantasy line. I have not done a collection video. I know that you guys want it. I know it's like my most requested video for sure, like times a hundred. And I will do that video. I promise you guys, I just didn't want to build this channel off of my collection. I didn't want to build this channel off of declutters either so I just haven't done those videos yet but I will do one eventually I love collection videos for sure I get it but it was something I just didn't want to do right off the bat and so yeah that was just kind of my thinking about it and you know my collections really personal to me in a lot of ways as much as I know everyone's gonna be so excited and I know so many of you will be happy to see it I've been on YouTube long enough to know what comes with it and I just wanted it to be mine for a little bit you know what I mean before I shared it anyway totally off topic Let's talk about jungle fantasy. I was saying all of that because I have almost all the fantasies. I have like a lot of the flankers. I am a collector at heart. I get interested uh, in stuff and I, I go deep. And so um, when it came to fantasy, you know, I think for a lot of us, fantasy, the original perfume from Britney Spears, it's such an iconic scent. And um, when I found out that there were just so many flankers, my little collecting mindset was like, gotta catch them all. So I have almost all of them, I think, if not all of them. I just don't have some of the like re-promotions and just different packaging. Anyway, all that being said, this jungle fantasy has me excited. Top notes on this, watermelon blossom, violet leaf, and yuzu. In the heart, Gustava flower, water lily, gardenia. And then in the base, tonka bean, absolute, and cupcake. Cupcake is kind of like a thing that goes through all of the fantasy or most of the fantasy perfumes. So I for sure want to pick this up at some point. I've noticed with the fantasy perfumes, that sometimes they launch in Europe before they launch here in the US or I don't know it's sometimes hard to get them so I'll probably buy this through fragrance net that's how I bought even the more recent fantasies and I can always get them on a really good deal there so I'm gonna wait around because I feel like there's this moment where everything's really inflated um, in price when it first launches and then it drops really significantly like the fantasies overall do not hold their value unless you have one of the more rare ones so I am excited for it I'm not sure how the scent's actually gonna be it's seems a little tropical. The watermelon blossoms, interesting. I don't always love watermelon in perfume, but I feel like this one is more of like a collector item for me. So that's more where I'm excited for it. Um, and I hope I love the scent, of course, but that isn't as big of a deal for me personally. I know that's like not everyone. I know that might seem counterintuitive, but that's the effing truth. Okay. And I don't give up. It's my collection, I can do what I want. Okay, thank you. <laughs> anyway, super excited. I love the green bottle too, cause I think Island Fantasy, I think that's what that one is. That one's green, but a lot of the other ones aren't really green. Anyway, we're spending way too long on this. Super excited for it from my little collector's heart. Next, this is one I'm also excited for from Floral Street. It's another one in collaboration with the Van Gogh Museum, and this one is Sweet Almond Blossom. I love this picture. It has like some vanilla bean hanging out. Like that has me excited. I have not smelled this yet. I do believe that it's out though, so I wanna go to Sephora and really see, cause that's where I tend to be able to smell floral street stuff. The notes on this, pink pomelo, passion fruit, mandarin, apple blossom, heliotrope, tonka bean absolute, vanilla sandalwood, and matcha tea. Seems promising. There's a lot of fruity things going on, but I feel like overall the floral street stuff is pretty likable. So I could see myself enjoying this fragrance, but maybe not enough to actually like 
buy it, I would definitely smell this one before just blind buying. I could have blind bought this like a long time ago. So considering that, I'm like, mm, I'm not gonna blind buy it, but I definitely wanna smell it. I am excited to see a new perfume from them. I haven't seen one in a while, so that one's definitely exciting. There's gonna be another flanker of the YSL Libre line, and this one's Libre Absolute Plantine. That's what I'm gonna say, I'm so sorry y'all. My tongue is clunky. I have a clunky, clunky accent and tongue. I'm so sorry. Anyway, top aldehydes, mandarin, bergamot, heart, orange blossom, lavender, and white lavender, and then base, ambergris, and vanilla. I usually like ambergris a lot in a perfume, so that has me excited. I love that there's vanilla. The white lavender is interesting. I've really never heard of that. Um, I don't know how that like differs from regular lavender, but exciting. I wanna smell this. I am not putting a lot on this in that I don't know how much I'm gonna like it. I've loved the most recent flanker before this one because it had like honey and more vanilla and all of that. But um, even that one is definitely on the periphery of like designer scents, like I like it, but you know, it's still a designer scent to me. Like it still has that kind of perfumey quality. So I'm excited. I love the bottle. I think it's kind of cool. It kind of reminds me of the Tom Ford bottle. Um, I don't know if it's Met Metalik. I think it is, but um, yeah, pretty cool. I think it looks cool in the line and like kind of all the different ones that they've had. So I wanna smell it. I wanna smell all of them, like don't get me wrong. <laughs> I want to smell all the new perfumes. I feel like this is missing some. There's definitely a lot more new perfumes. There's a new one from Fleur. It's called Father Figure, and this has notes of fig. If you can't tell in the name, they tend to do like a punny little name. This is unisex and sensual. It says it opens with fresh fig and dewy cassis, and then it has creamy sandalwood, orris root, and vanilla Madagascar. I'm pretty excited for this one. Um, I feel like with fig and coconut, like I've been putting off... Well, well, I haven't been putting off. I've filmed a coconut video. I filmed like two or three of them and I'm just not happy with them. And I know part of the reason why is because I'm filming a coconut video because I want to get a video out for summer and blah, 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 blah. But as much as I love coconut as a no, it's not what I'm like feeling right now. Like I am into gourmands right now. I'm into my freaking Bianca latte like I can't stop wearing that um, I've also been loving the new Atat Libre d'Orange perfume like I've really been sticking to those and so it's really hard for me to like get excited about some of the coconut scents like I have a few you guys know that I love but it's been hard for me to get excited and Coconut and fig are two of the notes that I've really loved always like even before I was super into perfume They're notes that I always looked out for and my favorite perfumes tended to have them in it And I'm realizing that as much as I still really like them I don't love them in the same way that I used to and so it's an interesting transition and it almost feels like this kind of identity I have in those notes and loving those notes doesn't feel as truthful as it once did like I still love them but when I really look at what I'm loving I'm like Maybe I'm more a marshmallow girly. <laughs> I'm more uh, into other things right now. And so anyway, this one though has me excited because the notes seem really great. And I'm hoping that it'll be a fig that I can love in my current state. That's what I'm thinking based off the notes. Like I love the sandalwood, even the orris and stuff, adding something kind of powdery. Like it has me excited that this isn't going to be super green and super floral in that way necessarily. I mean, cassis I think can sometimes be a little green but we'll see I'm excited for it is all I gotta say it has vanilla like that has me excited and I do tend to like the Fleur scents overall and um so yeah I want to check this one out for sure. Another newer scent, Sniff has released another perfume. They are releasing so much lately, especially between Sniff and the Secret Menu brand that they do. It feels like a lot because Crumb Couture just came out and then this one, which is called Citrus Circus, is new. I am excited for this. I have not smelled it yet. I really want to. What has me kind of like interested and intrigued with this one is kind of the dreamsicle imagery that's coming through. So this is a citrus scent and there's a lot of orange imagery and all of the promo pics and all that, but they're also like really marketing the creamsicle aspect of this fragrance. And that's where I'm like, okay, 
<laughs> I'm excited for that. I want to smell the creamsicle part. That would get me super excited. Okay, some of the notes in this. Creamsicle, grapefruit, lime zest, sparkling water, neroli, violet, cedar, and white amber. I think that sounds really nice and refreshing. I love the addition of the violet in there. The neroli has me a little scared, but also I can totally see how that bitterness or like that note would be really nice with everything as well. So I'm excited. Although I don't see any vanilla in here, which I would think you'd need for the creamsicle, but maybe that like creamsicle accord includes that. I'm not really sure. But I'm excited to smell that one. I get excited for sniff releases because I do think that they put a lot of like thought into the marketing and I don't know, they really sell it in that way, but also their scents are $65, which is really affordable, especially with so many like $100 and up perfumes coming out, even from brands you wouldn't expect to be that much money. I was literally right now looking <laughs> <laughs> at an Abercrombie and Fitch scent and it's called Elwood. It's just basically white bergamot. Like that's like the note I think in it, but it smelled so good. I smelled it in store. The pretty big bottle, I mean, don't get me wrong, 6.7 fluid ounces. It's like 130 something dollars. I'm like, what is happening? What the hell is happening? I think the 2.5 is like 65, but I was just shocked. When I saw that price, I was just like almost fainted. You know what I mean? So perfumes are expensive and I do feel like they're doing something kind of interesting in the space. So I'm excited for that. They are also launching a new candle and I know that's not perfume, but I think I'm gonna include candles in here too because I get excited about that type of stuff. So this one is called Private Hours and it's coming on the 20th. I don't know when this video will go up, but that one seems, interesting. I want to see the notes on it. Oh, it's in collaboration with the Standard Hotel. Okay, I found some notes. That took a while. <laughs> Leather, tobacco, flower, cannabis, spiced rum, amber, and cashmere woods. Definitely seems like dark, sultry. I don't know. You want to burn this in like a dimly lit room. You know what I'm saying? I want to smell it. I actually can get down with some of those scents. If you guys know Boy Smells, I really love their rhubarb smoke candle. It smells really great. It has that smokiness to it. it has something I think a little leathery to it as well. And then there's this tiny bit of like brightness coming from the rhubarb, but it's still not super sweet. So I really love that scent. I also really love their Italian Kush scent, which has a cannabis note as well. And then I did end up buying, I should talk about that here. I went back and forth on picking this baby up, the banana pudding candle. This is in collaboration with Magnolia Bakery and I ended up picking it up. I burned this a couple of times. I do not have like a good burn going at the moment. I've burned it like enough hours, but it's kind of tunneling. So I need to like do the aluminum foil trick. I've seen that happen, but I have a review of this specifically on my Instagram. If you guys don't follow me there, you can follow me. Sometimes I do beauty content, but it's a lot of just like ASMR kind of tappy product focused videos overall <laughs> over there. But um, I, so far, I don't know how to feel about this. Sometimes I really love it, but sometimes I get like almost burnt hair. It's like burnt hair tools when I'm smelling this or I don't know, it smells like something's kind of on fire. The banana pudding that this is, is definitely not like your super thick gourmand, overly sweet, overly synthetic kind of banana pudding. That's not what you're getting. I kind of wish we were getting that. I'm not gonna lie. I've heard from people that this is like exactly what the banana pudding at Magnolia Bakery tastes like. So I think that's really cool. And I always enjoy that Boy Smells does such unique scents. Like I can always count on them to kind Kind of take me on a journey and do something a little bit different so it's definitely giving that but i'd love to know your thoughts if you have this do you love it do you not i'm telling you sometimes i burn it and i love it and then sometimes i burn it and i go did i just light my hair on fire what is going on so yeah that's a new candle i actually did end up buying i smelled it in store when i was at lucky scent our scent bar here in la and the cold throw was so weak and it was also kind of savory and i was like whoa you know not into it but then i I went to Bloomingdale's and smelled it again and was like, I have to know what that smells like burnt. Like maybe the throw is better. Maybe it has like a sweetness that comes out. And I do think it comes out a little bit more, but it's also interesting, <laughs> you know? Okay, back to new perfumes. There is a new Coach perfume coming out called Coach Love. It has wild strawberry in the top, red rose, and in the base, cedar wood. I like the sound of those notes for sure. I don't have any Coach perfumes in my collection currently. From what I have smelled and what I can remember smelling in like Ulta and stuff, I think it smells 
okay, very likable, you know, kind of girly, overall just like an easy wear, easy grab type of perfume. I love the strawberry and the cedar wood note, so I wanna give that one a sniff actually. Like all those notes together seem really interesting. So if you smelled any of these, definitely let me know your thoughts for sure. I have a whole review on these, but Kaoli did release some new perfumes. This is the Wedding Collection, and there's two scents. One is Silk Santal, one is Velvet Santal. If you wanna know my full thoughts on it, definitely check out my video. I think it might be my last video that I've put up on this channel, I think, if I upload this correctly. Either way, it'll be down below, but I have really enjoyed these. I know these are limited edition and I think they sold out on Sephora really fast, so I don't know how available they are. I would check the Huda Beauty website if you're really interested in them, but to give you the rundown shortly, I really love Silk Santal. That one's definitely my favorite one out of the two and the one that I would pick up if I were you. Like, I like it enough that I would suggest if you like a sweet, sugary kind of vanilla with a nice little sandalwood in it, I think you'll like it. It has a little bit of that kind of almost plasticky kind of note that the Ariana Grande fragrances have. So in my review, I was saying, if you like Ariana Grande fragrances, I think you're gonna like this. And it's very similar. It's not exact, but very similar to Mod Vanilla to me, which Mod Vanilla is one of my favorites. So I really like that. I can already see a dent going in it. So yeah, I don't know if I would like get a backup. Like I don't love it that much, but it's definitely a nice reach. It's really good, easy, sweet, yummy. I like it. <laughs> I like that one a lot. The Velvet Santal is really nice as well. Like I think that one's really enjoyable too, but definitely when I'm thinking of like what I'm getting my real wear out of, Sulk Santal. <laughs> is definitely get in the use. There's a new Paco Rabanne fragrance. I thought this just came out though. This must be old. July 4th. I don't really get it. The Fame Parfum. Is this just like a different concentration. I don't know, the little robot person is in black instead of silver, so maybe it's like more intense or something, I don't know. Top notes, mango, pink pepper, bergamot, heart, jasmine, trio, incense, patchouli, base, musk, benzoin, and sandalwood. Um, I don't think I'm gonna pick this up. I wanna smell it, but I don't know, I'm not, I mean, I know I just said, oh, I wanna try that strawberry one, but it's like the strawberry rose and cedar wood. Okay, that combo sounds good. This combo, I mean, I love the idea of mango, but I'm realizing even from this summer, I'm not a fruity girl like that. I'm just not super fruity. There are some that I do really enjoy, but overall, like a just juicy perfume isn't totally me, you know what I mean? Like there are specific ones, I love my mango skin, but like how many mango skins do I need? You know what I mean? I definitely prefer having those more uh, woody, musky, everyday perfumes like that. I could have a ton of those. Sweet gourmands, sweet vanillas and marshmallows and foodie type scents, I could have a million of those. It's just not really in my wheelhouse. And on top of that, it is designer, which again, I'm not against designer, but I will say most of the design perfumes I smell have that like perfumey quality to them that I just don't particularly really love. For me, it's almost like they're everything so well mixed. I can't really smell all the different pieces and I don't know, it just kind of becomes a smoothie of a perfume to me anyway. So um, not super interested in it, even though it has the mango and I feel like the mango would have got me in the past, but I do want to smell it. Now this one I want for the bottle, but I did not like the original of this. This is from Victor and Rolf. It's the Good Fortune, but this one's the Elixir Intense. I didn't like the original Good Fortune. I love the bottle, but the actual scent was just like, what? <laughs> I don't know, it's just jasmine, but not even like a really nice, like syrupy, kind of sickly sweet jasmine. I could get down with that. It luckily wasn't indolic, so I, I love that it wasn't like a stinky jasmine, but it just felt like so forgettable, so odd of a release, honestly, to me, like I do not understand it. But this one has me kind of excited because it has incense in the top, heart of jasmine, I expected jasmine to be in this, and then the base though, bourbon vanilla, that's exciting. We're getting a rich, creamy vanilla in there. Like, come on. Sandalwood Palo Santo. So this one, I have a feeling that this might be the one for me because of the fact that it has that vanilla in the base. It has that sandalwood. I'm hoping that I'll really like it and that it'll be sweeter, that it'll be richer. Like, I want some perspective and I really just felt like that other one was like, 
what? Like, I just didn't get anything really from it. Like, I smell it, I'm like, what is ha I don't even know what's really happening here. Like, kind of boring. Honestly, the bottle should not be more exciting than the fragrance, guys, no. So I definitely wanna smell that one. And it's one that I could see myself, if I like it enough, I'm gonna get it, because I want that bottle. <laughs> There's a new Moogler Alien Goddess. This is Supra Floral, and it has notes of prickly pear, cactus flower in the top, heart jasmine sandbag, and then Kokanki, I don't know what that is, Immortelle? And then the base, ambergris, amber, moss, and floral notes. Interesting notes. I kind of love the idea of the prickly pear, the cactus flower. I'm assuming it's going to be kind of like a watery kind of florally moment is what I'm expecting to smell from that. But I don't know if I, I'm not really a Moogler girl. I have a few and I have a vial of Alien Goddess and I get why people like it. It's just not... It just isn't special enough for me. Like, it's not special enough for me. Love this bottle, though. The bottle's stunning. Like, I, I want to like it for the bottle, but so far, not really for me. Okay, we're kind of going back a little bit. Some of these aren't super new. So this one, I think, is out. It's from By Killian. It's the Princess O Fresh, and this is notes of marshmallow, green tea, bergamot, and ginger. I definitely want to smell this. I've talked about how I'm a marshmallow girl already so many times in this video. Like, this is a thing. Killian's so expensive. I just don't know if I'd want to spend the money on an eau fresh, you know what I mean? But I do want to smell it. <laughs> and I love the idea of even the like ginger and it has like what looks like lime here with the marshmallow. Like that's kind of like a fun little lime jello marshmallow dessert is what I'm kind of thinking about with a little bit of spice maybe from the ginger. It seems refreshing, seems nice. So I want to smell it, but I would have to really, really, really love it to buy it. I have a few perfumes from By Killian and I do like the ones I have, but I'm definitely pretty picky overall. I don't know. I need to smell the house more though. I feel like my nose has changed a lot over time and I feel like there are scents I can go back to and I definitely have different opinions on so maybe I just need to like revisit the house more. This next one's a little bit older because I've done a review on these already so I'll leave that down below from Anna Sweet. I believe that's how you say it. Thank you guys for correcting me. This is the Sunday Trio. There's three different perfumes that came out in the Sunday line. Again, you want to know my full thoughts. Definitely check that video out. I think these are the cutest thing. I love the bottle so much and and I expect no less from Anna Sui because that's how so many of the different perfumes from the line are. Like they're just adorable. Like to me, they always kill it on packaging. So I loved this. I love that the cherry itself is the sprayer. Like, please, it's so cute. But the scents themselves are a little disappointing and I didn't expect tons of wear and I didn't expect, you know, lots of longevity, but I really think it was a missed opportunity to not do something a little more creamy, a little more lactonic, a little bit more fitting for like Sundays specifically, like maybe something not as fruity and more, I don't know, foodie like that, like a chocolate one, a caramel one, a vanilla one, like that would have been amazing, but I didn't make them, you know what I mean? I bought them still, so. <laughs> Hey, it worked, but I definitely think there was like a missed opportunity there. There's a new perfume from Gucci, the Floraline. This one is Gorgeous Magnolia. I think this is the third one in the line. There was like a uh, gardenia, I think. I don't know. There's a pink one, a teal one, and now this one's like a lavender color. I don't know about this. This has notes of dewberries, accord, magnolia essence, patchouli essence. I do like the first one that came out. Like I get why it's likable, but I'm just not a super girly floral type of person. Um, when it comes to my scents, again, I like something a little more woody, again, musky. I like, a, you know, a choice floral here or there, but when something is overall made up of florals, it's not really something I'm into. So I don't think this one's going to be right for me, but of course I want to smell it. Of of course I want to smell it. Even just like Gorgeous Magnolia, the name, I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> I don't think it's for me. <laughs> I don't think that one's for me. I want to mention a body care item um, from Sol de Janeiro. The Beja Flor scent is now in a body wash, which I think is really exciting. I love that body mist so much. I've actually run through one of them and then rebought the like bigger size. So I think it'd be really nice in the body wash. Although I will say this body wash doesn't suds up as much. If it's like the same uh, formula, as the other ones that they have. It's more of something a little bit creamy, so it doesn't dry you out, which is nice, but it doesn't get really sudsy. And I do appreciate something with a little bit of suds. I, I like that experience in the shower. So that is something, but I love that scent. It's probably my favorite scent from the line, even over the original Boom Boom Cream. So um, that is kind of exciting to me. Okay, one of the last perfumes I think I wanna talk about for the video. This one's a new one from Byredo. It's available now in Europe, so I'm excited to see when it'll come to the US. It's called Rouge Chaotique and it's a nice like dark almost cherry 
berry red liquid. It has notes of bergamot, lemon, saffron, and cassis. The heart has plum, praline, upcycled oak wood, and the base has papyrus and upcycled patchoud. So I'm really excited about that one. It's part of the Night Vales collection. I can't wait to smell it. It's so interesting. I recently smelled uh, Vinny Antique. I think that's what it is. And I didn't love that initially, but when me and Sam were smelling it, we we're like, damn, that's good. So that one might be one I add to my collection this fall. I think I'm ready for it. It's so interesting how scents change throughout time, like how you experience them, how much you like them, all of that. I think I've finally switched over to that one. It smells really good. All right, I think that's everything I'm gonna talk about for this video. Let me know if you like this format though. I can definitely do these every little bit when we have a lot of new releases to talk about. I think it's fun because there's a lot here that I maybe wouldn't talk about otherwise because I'm not necessarily super interested in them, but I'd love to know if you've smelled any of these for some of the ones that are out already let me know what your thoughts are or just what your thoughts are like are you excited about them are you not let me know down below thank you so much for watching i hope you have an amazing day and other than that i will see you in the next one bye guys